for many of you, for most of you, Cecilia Wallach uh, doesn't need any introduction. Uh, from Los Angeles to the Carpathian Mountains, to Kansrou Bachelet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> to Istanbul, <laughs> to Shepherdsville, Kentucky, with her dear family, Cecilia is really at home anywhere all over the world. And please give a wonderful round of applause to Cecilia Wallach. I am here mostly um, in my capacity as teacher, as a wicked poetry stepmother to 12 of the most amazing, not only 12 of the most amazing young poets, but 12 of the most amazing young human beings. It's been so much fun to be with them. It's been such a, a pleasure and such a joy. Uh, to be with them for the past four weeks and each of them will read for you a selection of mostly work that they've written in the past few weeks that they've been here uh, a lot of this stuff is very new work um, and we may hear some of their more polished pieces as well with a little anti-bio. I was hoping everybody would read theirs because I think they're really fun. So, um, when Corey was in preschool, she wanted to have the neck of a pigeon because of how it shined in the light. She adopted a seven-year-old cat named Mimi this past November. She is eight now. Often, Corey will have conversations that solely revolve around her cat, which does nothing but aid the life of the nickname recently thrust upon her, Cat Corey. Her car's name is Long John Sally. Thank Christ for you, you little gem. I was drowning at the swap meet, and you, creature of the South African waters, you saved me. I was so lost and hot in that crowd, so sad, so silly over the sudden loss of familiar love, and there I was, so sad and sweaty, and you caught my eye, and that was it. I am saved. Now you sit on my nightstand, regal and sexual. This is the end for you, God. No more gutless lying for your sins and for our salvation. I am done. Gone Buddhist, gone to roll your precious holy pages into blunts and gone to breathe them into ash. Gone to fuck with marriages and leather-strapped fags who want a stranger's filthy sex leather-strapped to their filthy sex. Smacking women around isn't enough for your men. I catch his eye near the boulangerie. May face full of fromage, I turn away. His weathered visage lingers hauntingly, looming heavy in my brain. His voice like sticky, chewed caramel strings, a soft bonjour, monsieur, to each passerby. Monsieurs who brusquely barrel over him, flicking their cigarettes in, in crude reply. Hot ash peppers his eyes Arms and of stone bro. coated in butter and silk. With his infinite shoulders, a neck of burnt sugar, the voice of a beat-up bike motoring over gravel in the gray of dusk. He's a bruised peach, an asymmetrical garment on the final sail rack, expired milk, a return puzzle, box left open, pieces missing, for which I gladly pay full price every time. Think not of what needs to be done or should have been finished already, long ago, yesterday, because there will always be time. Patience? Patience for what? For babies, elderly ladies, your parents, and yourself. Be patient. Be patient because the best... One should always laugh. Laugh at yourself until you run out of laughs, until your tummy turns into a sixer, and then invite everyone to your mixer. <laughs> you should all drink and laugh and then laugh harder until your laughter is passed along among everyone in the room, until the entire city is laughing, and they will all be laughing with you. And when you see that girl bat her lashes at you, just smile and laugh until she smiles and laughs right back at you. You should laugh so hard that it makes in you In a taxi out. with an amicable West African man behind the wheel, we hit 35 euros on the freeway, and I decided I will not pay more than 60. I would not pay more than 60. I would not pay more. We hit 50 as we got lost upon the Esplanade. Still, I would not pay more. Arrival home, 59.80. Add 20 cents for a tip, and not a cent more. Be always a motherfucker, <laughs> leading crowds by the hand in the direction of free meals in their homes, not yours. <laughs> Free drinks on their dimes, one feast upon another among a feast of friends slathered in freedom. Write poetry like you know it. 
I know that you took her to Sacre Coeur because you told me that I had to go to Sacre Coeur. I know that you stayed with her at the Hotel de Bastille Luanne because you wrote it in an email you sent to me this morning. <laughs> but there is another place in Paris, a place that you may not know, a place where it smells like marble and laughter, and every line is the first line of a poem. I'll bring you here one day. Ask the waiter who fidgets with his arms crossed for the table under that red awning. And in a language you do not yet understand, I'll order one glass of wine. Then I will leave it half full and push it towards you. We will finish what was started here, I promise. Mm -hmm. no. There's something in language where to be becomes being, is, am, are, were, been. But I can, you can, he can, we can, they can. And none of it makes any sense, seeing that every word is capable of being lost, although it never is. But is communication even necessary to communicate? Because there are hundreds of ways to say something simple. My love is unconditional. Once more, I'd like to say thank you to Brian King, Andrew Ramirez, Corinne DeWitt, Jessica Eller, Diana Rosenberger, Cordelia Arterian, Sophia Kang, Matthew Cruz, Diana Vaden, Rosalina O'Sullivan, Kelly Barton, Leslie Wasserman, okay. <laughs> Kelly Barron. I changed your name to Kelly Barton. <laughs> Thank you also to Suzanne Allen, who has Thank been you. videographing, videotaping, um, making things happen behind the scenes, in front of the, in front of the scenes. It's been a wonderful, wonderful four weeks. Thank you, Paris, for having us. We will be back. We will return. <laughs>